plenty of football to get to, plenty of NFL to get to. We're going to start with college, though. Uh, we heard from Coach Prime. He says, talking about Shadur Sanders, quote, certain cities ain't going to happen. What is your reaction to that? Uh, okay. I, I, when are we going to stop platforming him? Seriously. A, I don't even know if Shadur Sanders is that good. B, you won four games last year. And C, I feel like every day I got to hear another news story from Deion Sanders. Here's something you should try, Deion. Recruiting. Didn't go on the road a single time this offseason. What? Because he's Coach Prime. The players come to him. No, they don't. Or he's going to get to transfers who come in and want to play for him. they don't. And when you set up the system and basically throw everybody under the bus and tell your son it's better to take a sack than throw an incomplete pass to pad your stats, I that doesn't happen in the NFL. That's my point is how much longer before people recognize what's going on. Do I love the idea of Dion? Yes, I find him incredibly interesting. But the actualities of the fantasy? Uh, what are we doing here? Yeah, I'm, I'm really starting to separate one of my favorite players from Dion, Coach Prime. There's Dion and there's Coach Prime. And Coach Prime, this – Kenny, he's another season of winning four games before Colorado realizes, oh boy, we just screwed up. So this story is not brought to you by Uber. Perhaps it should have been Georgia running back Trevor Etienne arrested on DUI, reckless driving, and more charges. When are they just going to get these players Uber gift cards and just say, son, no more? What is it with Georgia and driving? What am I missing here, Ken? another point. No, seriously, your whole, I feel like there's been 20 vehicular uh, related issues here. Maybe you're right. Maybe we just get a rideshare sponsor for Georgia football. Yeah. What the hell is going on down there? And ATN's going to be your starting back. I don't know what's going on, but I feel like this is a bigger issue than just Georgia or anything like that. I feel like we see it all the time in the pros. Just have a driver. Uber's not that expensive for these kids. Because you're in college. You're at the top of the world. Everybody's buying you stuff, giving you drinks, looking the other way that you feel entitled. And you can go out and, and try to pull off these stunts until you get busted. And then it looks bad. So, yes, you're right. If I'm Kirby Smart, guys, everybody. Here's a $500 gift card. Use them. As a matter of fact, the balance better be close to zero. Because if I see you never used it, you're in trouble. The NFL will let replay assistants fix mistakes on roughing the passer and intentional grounding calls. That's what's been coming out in all these new rule ideas that they've been talking about. Are we getting closer to Sky Judge? I'm torn because I really don't want any more play stoppages, but I'll tell you the one part of that I agree with, Rico, is the rough and the passer. We've reached a point where some of these calls are so egregious, they're so ridiculous, and they are they are drive, they are are drive turnovers. Mm -hmm. You could be on third and 18, and it's a bad roughing the passer. First and 10, you've upended everything. I, I'll live with it, but Kenny, I mean, do we all agree there are too many play stoppages? Yes and no. There's play stoppages, Mike, but I don't care if, if you have to stop the play and it adds two minutes so long as it's correct, rather than a week long of shows saying, oh my God, he was eligible the whole time. Like, just, we're not in a hurry. Okay. When you, when you go to a game, if you're looking at your watch, you probably shouldn't have bought tickets for the game. But yes, I like the fact of Sky Judge. And you know what the thing about Sky Judge is? You don't need two minutes to see what everybody on their 4K TVs can see at home. That wasn't pass interference. That wasn't roughing the passer. Hey, guys, you blew the call. Let's move right. on. We don't need you looking into a lunchbox or what looks like a Nintendo Game Boy. Right. You're pulling like, out what your are we iPhone. Doing? The big screen's right here. Everybody's gathered around your iPhone like, hey, guys, can we use this? Why do they do that, man? Well, we don't want to share it with the view. Like, the viewers are already watching it. It's being replayed Turn around, look at that big 50-yard screen. Right, the TV they're on is smaller than an iPad. How Wait, is this how we're doing this? Right, is his foot in bounds? On, can you expand it? On? How about you turn around? There it is. But, yeah, the Sky Judge, I'm all for. And, yeah, I'm okay if the game gets delayed. It shouldn't have to. But if it's 30 seconds to get a call right rather than living in infamy because, man, you screwed that call up, take the 30 seconds. So uh, more on the rule changes. The NFL is going to ban uh, hip drop tackles plus the new kickoff rule, which Rico was explaining to me before the show. What do you guys make of that? It's um, it's interesting, Mike. I don't know if you, 
for the people, explain it. There's the kickers lined up, I think, at the 40-yard line, the 35-yard line. And then everybody else, I believe, is within 10 yards of each other, starting at the opponent's 40. So the kicking team is at the 40. The opponent is at the 30. And then you have two guys back there to return kicks. No one moves until the ball is caught. There's no fair catch. You have to return it. And the ball has to land in a certain zone or the ball ends up on the 40-yard line. I hate it's, it. It's to improve kickoff so that you just can't, you know, because it was just touchback city. But that's what they did. They did that. I understand. So this, here's it's, an ele- it's an element from the XFL. It's exactly why I don't like it. It's cheap. It's like MTV Rock and Jock. Here's my solution. There are no more kickoffs. Take the ball at the 25. Go play football. But what about the guys who can return it? But see, I like this because, Mike, you're going to actually get returns. I don't you're going to actually get, if you have somebody on your run, you got a Cooper DeGene or somebody you draft who could take it back to the house. Okay, that's fun. So long as it was just the kickoffs, it was like, okay, what are we doing here? That's wasted time. You want to talk about take that time away and the game speeds up. And if you want to kick an onside kick, you can if you're losing in the fourth quarter but you have to tell your opponent you're about to kick the ball onside, which to me defeats the whole purpose. But that's the the kickoff rule. I suppose I ruined that too. No, no, okay. that one's not on you. The okay. blood's not on your hands. Thank you. That. Let's talk about uh, David's team. He is not here, but we will still discuss. Uh, Mike Tomlin talking about Russell Wilson, saying he has pole position to be the starting quarterback, not against competition. And when it's time to compete, Justin will be given an opportunity to show his capabilities. That's his quote. It's so... Who's going to start the season, and who's going to get the bulk of these uh, of these starts when it's all said and done? I, I I think Russell starts the season because I think they kind of promised him they got him there first, but I do think that Russ is probably two interceptions away from getting the hook, and you're not on the you're only paying him about a million bucks. Whereas, you know, Fields could be your future, Kenny. I'm thinking by the time they hit the bye week, unless Russell lights it up, Russell's gone, and it'll be Justin's job now. Real quick, what was lost in all of this was him talking about Cam Sutton. That got lost in the wash. Like, yeah, you know, I, I reach out and I talk to players. Hey, hey, coach, have you talked to Cam Sutton? That's none of your business. Weird. I'm sorry, what? Really? The weird. man's missing. The, can we get past the football in the br- – Coach, do you know where he's at? Because we've been kind of looking for him. It's none of your business. Rico, how come it is every time I step up for David here, you steal the next thing I'm going to say? I was about to bring that exact sorry. thing up. I'm sorry. Mike, talk about the quarterbacks. It's just difficult because I have to let go of wanting Justin Fields to be good when the whole league basically said he's a bum. So it kind of leads you to believe Wilson will start. I just don't get it. We've already seen the ceiling for Russell Wilson at this age. Justin Fields, at one point, I know he hasn't won a lot of games. At a certain point here, he carried a god-awful team, Mm -hmm. and people talked about him as a potential MVP. I just can't believe he won't be able to beat out Russ. Mike, in the NFL world, they build you up to tear you down to build you back up again. I mean, think about a year ago how everybody was telling you how dumb C.J. Stroud was. He was going to flame out, and Bryce Young was going to be the second coming of whatever. So now you want to see what Caleb Williams can do in Chicago. So in order to get him to Chicago, you got to say that Justin is a bum and he's horrible, (laughs) and you got to get rid of him. And it's like, you don't have to do that, but sure. And if enough NFL people say it and talking heads say it, it must be true because why would they say that if it wasn't? Because they have nothing else. That, that's the information they were fed from the Chicago Bears. Maybe it's that, but I, I saw what he did. I mean, you didn't really have an offensive coordinator consistently. You didn't have a coach who actually believed in you. No. Like no one, you were set up to fail, and you still carried that god awful team on your back, and you made them watchable. So yeah, I actually I hope he goes to Pittsburgh. He lights it up, and at some point can just give the middle finger to Chicago. I, there's nothing for me to add. All right, we'll end on this. Uh, Bleacher Report released a list of. Five teams capable of claiming the division title after strong offseason signings. I'll rapid fire them. You tell me yes or no. Okay. Washington Commanders. No. no. Pittsburgh Steelers. No. No. New York Jets. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, the Indianapolis Colts. Yes. Mm, yeah. I, I, no, I don't. Anthony so. Richardson Ascension year two. 
I, I, I was just, never a Richardson fan. So, but you hate Trevor Lawrence. That's true. But Come he, on, well, all, that, all, but all he does is win. Okay. And the last one, the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, hundred yes. percent. I think there's no team in football that has made a bigger move than Atlanta, based on the only thing that kept them from winning back-to-back division titles has been acceptable quarterback play. Kirk Cousins, if he's simply above acceptable, above average, I think they're a team that's going to be a nightmare to face. And then I saw what they're in the running for uh, Hassan Reddick. Like, they're one of the teams that they make make a trade for. Like, okay, Atlanta. Atlanta's doing what I like to see Detroit do. But have you seen we Bijan don't. run? No. Yeah, no, no one did. That's why Art Smith's not there anymore. Smith was like, Anna, how about we use him as a decoy? Yeah. 4D chess. <laughs> and that is in football today. <laughs>